praying in the Spirit. Praying in the Holy Ghost is probably one of the most misunderstood subjects in the body of Christ. There is always all kinds of arguments and diverse opinions on the subject. What is praying in the Holy Ghost and how did it start? Let's do an exploration on this subject from the Bible to clear every doubt. 1 Corinthians 14 AMP says, Pursue this love with eagerness, make it your goal, yet earnestly desire and cultivate the spiritual gifts to be used by believers for the benefit of the church, but especially that you may prophesy to foretell the future, to speak a new message from God to the people. For one who speaks in an unknown tongue does not speak to people but to God, for no one understands him or catches his meaning. But by the Spirit he speaks mysteries, secret truths, hidden things. But on the other hand, the one who prophesies speaks to people for edification, to promote their spiritual growth, and speaks words of encouragement, to uphold and advise them concerning the matters of God, and speaks words of consolation, to compassionately comfort them. The one who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but one who prophesies edifies the church, promotes growth in spiritual wisdom, devotion, holiness, and joy. Now I wish that all of you spoke in unknown tongues, but even more, I wish that you would prophesy. Then what am I to do? I will pray with the Spirit, by the Holy Spirit that is within me, and I will pray with the mind, using words I understand. I will sing with the Spirit, by the Holy Spirit that is within me, and I will sing with the mind, using words I understand. Otherwise, if you bless and give thanks to God in the Spirit only, how will any outsider or someone who is not gifted in spiritual matters say the Amen of agreement to your thanksgiving, since he does not know what you are saying? Praying in the Spirit is simply praying with your spirit man to God. The above verses show that there are two ways to pray or sing, in the Spirit or in your own understanding. When we sing in the Spirit, it is usually not easy to understand on the surface. However, it connects you to God and life bubbles on the inside of you. Praying in the Spirit is primarily to edify you. Jesus said in John 4, 24 AMP, God is a spirit, the source of life, yet invisible to mankind, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. Therefore, praying in the Spirit is not the devil's language as some have wrongly assumed, but another way to communicate with God beyond what our minds can even grasp. Jesus also gave insight into the subject of praying in the Spirit in John 7, 37. So when was the first account of believers praying in tongues? The Bible shows the answer in Acts 2, 1. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly a sound came from heaven like a rushing violent wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. There appeared to them tongues resembling fire, which were being distributed among them, and they rested on each one of them as each person received the Holy Spirit. And they were all filled, that is, diffused throughout their being with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in other tongues, different languages, as the Spirit was giving them the ability to speak out clearly and appropriately. One important thing to note here is that praying in other tongues begins with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. This means that when the Holy Spirit comes upon the individual, he manifests through speaking in other tongues as living waters bubble up on the inside. So, a major evidence of the baptism of the Holy Spirit is speaking, praying, or singing in the Spirit or in other tongues. It is therefore spiritual to pray in tongues. The critical question that comes to most believers that want to pray in the Spirit is, who baptizes me or how do I get baptized in the Holy Spirit? Matthew 3, 11. Jesus Christ is the one that is saddled with the responsibility of baptizing people in the Holy Ghost. Even today, he still baptizes anyone that desires to be baptized. And he may do it through others praying for you or it just happens spontaneously when you desire his baptism. What does it take for me to be baptized in the Holy Spirit? Isaiah 44, 3. A strong thirst and desire is undoubtedly the greatest need of those that genuinely want to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. 
This thirst drives us to pray continuously until we're baptized in the Holy Spirit, just like in the upper room in Acts 2, 4. Don't be deceived by anyone into thinking that we need to pay for it. The gifts of God are freely given, so also is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Isaiah 55, 1 And no, it's not money that is needed to buy his water, just your thirst. Yes, gifts can be given with honor to someone anointed or given as an instruction from God, but the Spirit's outpouring is gotten by a genuine hunger. See what Scripture says concerning offering money in exchange for the baptism of the Holy Spirit in Acts 8, 14. Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who, when they came down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. And when Simon saw that through laying on of the apostles' hands the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me also this power, that on whomever I lay hands he may receive the Holy Ghost. But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter, for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent, therefore, of this thy wickedness, and pray God, if perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. For I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness, and in the bond of iniquity. Then answered Simon, and said, Pray ye to the Lord for me, that none of these things which ye have spoken come upon me. Let's examine the mission of the Holy Spirit. Number 1. He strengthens us in our inner man against the day of battle. Ephesians 3, 16 AMP May he grant you out of the riches of his glory to be strengthened and spiritually energized with power through his spirit in your inner self, indwelling in your innermost being and personality. The physical and inner strength we need to fulfill God's purpose can only be given by God's indwelling spirit. 1 Corinthians 2, 12 As the Spirit of God, which is the Holy Spirit, interacts with our spirit, he strengthens our spirit man. As he relates with our spirit man, he opens us to the light of the word, which then gives us strength in the day of battle. Number 2. He gives us power to prevail when we pray. There are times when we obviously want to pray, but we feel so weary. It is at times like this that he heals our prayer weaknesses. Romans 8, 26 If we fail or faint, then we will miss out on God's best. However, if we endure trials, temptations, and challenges to the very end, then Jesus promises to reward us. When people try to run their race in their own strength, it is sure that they will fall but trusting in the Spirit's strength always edifies us. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for the light of your word on the Holy Spirit. Thank you for this truth. Jesus, you are the baptizer. I ask that you baptize me with the Holy Spirit this day. Fill me with your Spirit, Lord. I crave and desire that you fill me. I receive you into my life today and walk in the consciousness of your presence in me and with me. Thank you for filling me up this day, my Lord. I receive your sweet Holy Spirit. Now open your mouth and let the word of the Spirit flow out of you. Out of your belly flows rivers of living waters. Let the pure and Holy Spirit of God have his way right now as you release yourself to speak in the language of the Spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for filling me with your Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, awesome God. For in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Continue to exercise yourself in the Spirit. Don't hold back as you continue in prayers until you're filled with the Holy Spirit and you can also be refilled whenever you feel weary. Congratulations on your new status in Jesus' name.